Getting your results in your lab book, it doesn't need to be neat, but we need to be able to read it. And there's a convention of how you set up the table. The independent variable, so the thing that you're varying goes in the first column. And the convention is that you use the lowest value of the independent variable first. So let's look at temperature. So 20 degrees, 30, 40, 50, 60. Remember that you've got five values for the independent variable because you chose that in your range. So you put a meaningful title in your first column. So temperature of the yeast and you make sure that you put units. The same thing with the dependent variable, they go in these four columns. So we've got one, two, three columns for each of your repeat readings. And then we put a, a column heading all the way across these four columns because it's describing what the data is showing in here. So the time taken for methylene blue to turn colourless in seconds. When we're measuring in seconds we don't use any decimal places because you can't be that accurate with a stop clock. Even though it's got a tenth of a second and hundredth of a second on the stop clock, you're not accurate enough to measure at that, uh, at that level. So we don't expect to see any decimal places. So you put your values in here, you calculate your mean. Um, acceptable level of accuracy in the mean is one decimal place greater, one more decimal place than you've used in here. So if you've used no decimal places for time, and then you decide that you want to put seven, so for example, use a decimal place in your mean, that's fine. But make sure that when you calculate your mean that you round up or round down appropriately, otherwise it's wrong.